Hello. Welcome to the Ann and John P. Nelson Gallery here at the fourth floor of the Hoff Family Arts and Culture Center in Council Bluffs. Here on the exhibit floor we have shows up like Council Bluffs History Through Art, local contemporary shows, we also have a featured artist, Barbara Paints People. So we're going to take a look at those, so if you didn't get to see them, this is your last chance to. We'll start over here. So these sketches are at the heart of Council Bluffs History Through Art. It's where George Sign is documented moving through the area with General Dodge at his side. The sheer amount of detail that's in these pieces is just amazing. If you want to learn more about it, we have a talk by a master painter, Amy Peters, which is on our Facebook and our YouTube. We'll go into more depth of these, we'll look at a little closer some of the paintings, because all of these possibly were the beginnings of doing a painting, which we have on loan from the library as well as the Dodge House. We'll go take a look at those now. History of Council Bluffs through art. We have pieces like this behind me by George Simon, the paintings he made from the sketches you saw earlier. There's such painstaking detail that you wouldn't know there's a graveyard here unless someone pointed it out to you. Our master painter, Andy Peters, will talk about more of this if you go to our YouTube or our Facebook. We're going to look at these over here to show how we truly capture the moment in time. So, with the hope of any of this, is always that the person who sees something wants to look into it further. So as you can see here, it's that moment that is stuck. It's been painted like a photograph. The person is mid-step onto the horse. The dog is looking up at his master. There's a freshly dug grave, so there's emotional weight. This is a, a serious moment that, any, again, unlike an impressionistic painting, it's actually what was seen and done for such a master, masterful way. The color and everything used is just beautiful. Here we can see bison, again, feeding on the prairie. He's, he's working his way through the area. He's creating basically like the storyboard of the land. And that's what made it so incredible because we know what it looked like because of him. Another shot of Council Bluffs right here. Uh, this piece again illustrates looking down across the town. Uh, these are on loan from the Dodge House and the, the library here, the Council Bluffs. Okay, so with this one you can see that this piece is slated to be painted. These sketches are part of our permanent collection, the sketches of George Simon that we talked about. So he do this step and then he moved to a painting. But you can see the reference lines here gridded off as he intends to enlarge this to be the painting we'll see over here. Um, it just shows a process of working through an exactness for his work. So in the talks you can hear Richard Warner go on about the life and times of Council Bluffs itself. And then Tom Emmett from the Dodge House talks about the man himself and what went through his life moving through the area. So in this piece, we can see the enlargement from that smaller sketch over there and the amount of detail that he transplants from a simple sketch. The single drawing becomes this right here. And again, showing George Simon and his ability to narrate history now, like we talked about earlier, the paintings here are Grant Wood. They're not George Simon. And so these pieces were painted in the corn room and commissioned by Gene Epley at the Chieftain Hotel in 1926. So he said he wanted it to feel like he could pull an ear of corn off the wall. And that's what these pieces are. They were attached to the wall with rabbit glue, and they were pulled off the wall by a neurosurgeon who was, they basically barely escaped being demoed and thrown in the dumpster. To live before you're here today. You can learn more about these stories if you request information from our website, or if you look for the history of it that we'll have listed after this. So if you move through these, you can see that Grant Wood, the famous painter that we all know from his American Gothic, had almost a scenic painter effect with these. Moving on, you can see that there's panels because they were cut off the wall. And you can see right here, we have where a chair rail was running through the piece. Now, in our talks on YouTube, as well as our Facebook, you can learn more about these because of Ben Johnson from the library talked in depth about Grant Wood and his work. 
And now we're over here. We move past the history of Council Bluffs to our, to our modern contemporary pieces. So we have Barbara Paint's people, uh, this artist. So these are all deconstructed versions of people, they're portraits, and he wants to capture the essence of a person. You don't see it at first, but you can see the array of lines, colors, shapes, pattern, as he's chosen to somehow portray this person to the very essence of the material. And that's what makes his work pretty incredible. He believes in deconstructing the image to find what the person really is. And so now we're over here on this side of the gallery. Uh, and this is more of Barbara's work. And you can see each one of these is actually a person. It's a portrait that he's done. He's constructed together. And at least juxtaposed against him, the historical works just shows that art is not sometimes always literal. Um, and again, his Q and A is where you'll learn more about this. You'll learn about his process, who he is, where he came from, and what he does. Uh, so I hope you watch that. And now we move away from all the construction, the the pieces of painting, and we move into the, the real. So this this photograph done by Buck Christensen is just post a fire, and he captures mystique so well in negative space that this piece you could look at it for an hour and enjoy it the whole time. These kind of pieces you can take home as well, and we'll have throughout the building as the upper gallery here changes. Let's go look at this. And so if we look at these pieces here, the important thing to point out, this piece is actually made of yarn, so breaking the model of painting a bit. Um, it's, it's a beautiful piece. These pieces, the local contemporary pieces, are for sale. They're in the gallery right now, but they'll move to the rest of the building. So please always consider that you can come here to purchase art, to support artists and take it in your own home. Here we have Anne. Anne's work is, it's, well, it's amazing. It's a use of light, color, um, and time locked in a moment. She often likes to capture beauty in a moment. And so much like Barbara's work, which was a collage, reminiscent of Romeo Verdi, we have J.A.B. Yoshimoto's work here, which is a diorama of laser cut components stacked and painted on top of each other. J.A.B. has a show coming up in January, so I hope you come up for that. It'll have more of his work, and often his pieces like illustrate something political satire. He's saying something to you in a more literal sense, because you can actually make out the shapes of the people, the moment, and oftentimes it has something you should learn from the scene. Maybe a dark comedy, maybe a lesson, but he always wants you to learn something. So this piece right here, uh, done out of metal, is by Susan Woodford. She's also one of our studio artists. Uh, Buck, who we saw earlier, was as well. So she constructs these pieces, these weldments, and they're always often very it's full of movement and motion. She wants to get into kinetics more. Like any art and artist, the work's always developing. Uh, the person learns from their previous work and then moves beyond that to do something else different. They change with time. And that's why pieces of art like this are so important because it is locked in time, similar to George Simon's work, very literal. But this is a thought locked in time, which makes it so incredibly valuable because the story is what makes it compelling. We'll talk about the motion and change of an artist with time. Uh, these two pieces are by the same artist, Clay Cunningham. Uh, he teaches our modern below classes here. We have so many classes that you can take. Any class you see online, you can also book a private version of it. Um, but these pieces show someone who's working again, very concrete with his, his work. He's, turning, he's throwing this on a wheel and then carving. And then this piece right here, and then he talks about the ability to manipulate clay to throw it in a different shape. You have to use force to it. So I feel like you see two points, two moments of thought in his work here. And that's what you get when you visit a gallery. You get to see that, that exploration of the person themselves. And uh, that's truly incredible. I'm hoping you're beginning to realize that we have so many pieces here available for you uh, to view as well as collect. Uh, we have this piece here from Christine and it's amazing. It shows such attention to detail, the craftsmanship, and it's Batik. If you're not familiar with Batik, please look it up. She has a workshop she often offers uh, as well, talking about her process and talking about other uh, overlapping process. And those are classes that you can take here at the Pace as well. So watch for those on our calendar. Well, that about sums it up. Behind me we have the Travis Rice pieces, which are symbolic to the opening of this building. I hope you enjoyed our digital tour. I'm Adam Van Osdell with Pace here in Council Bluffs at the Hoff Center. Please keep your arts alive by supporting local art and artists, and please visit us. Look for our Facebook and website for updates on classes, gallery openings, and art for sale.
performances by many of our partners. Thanks a lot, and see you later.